ignore_time_segment_in_scoring and welcome again to Discovering Truth and I am Pastor Forbes from Abiding with Ministries. Uh, we are now in part four of our discussion on the book of Jonah and I'm sure we are beginning to get a feel of what it's like seeing the mercy of God at work, seeing his judgment and justice at work, seeing how Jonah like you, like me, can be given an assignment, a task by God and we can assume we are smarter than God and want to do our own because maybe we feel that um, um, God is too kind to people, he's merciful or his laws are so strict. And then we can also see how God shows other people mercy when he gives them a chance to repent and we can see so many things. So we want to continue in part four 
Um, the simple story here is that God spoke into the heart of this prophet of his called Jonah, sent him to a city that was very terrible because when God says you are wicked, then you are really wicked. And God sent prophet Jonah to the city called Nineveh and said that their wickedness had reached him and he was going to wipe them out. So Jonah should go and prophesy against them. And Jonah kind of worked it out in his mind that I know this God, halfway through he will change his mind and he will show his mercy, he will show Yermande, you know. And um, so he's not going to do it because at the end of the day he may be the one to lose out. That was smart thinking on Jonah, but um, at the end of the day he lost out with God because, you know, God is God and really when he asks us to do something, we must do it. Um, irrespective of the message, we must still love people. As I said last week, when you have to tell somebody that they won a million pounds, it's easy, it's nice. You say it even assuming that you may get something from that money. But when you have to look at somebody and say, the baby died, your husband died, your wife died, or something has gone wrong, it's difficult for you to do that because you don't want to do it. And sometimes you don't want to equate yourself with bad news. So you want somebody else to do it because you don't want to go on record as the one who broke the bad news. But life is like that. And we said that sometimes it's not the good news or the bad news. It's how your disposition, your attitude. Are you the type that rejoices over people's calamity, their misfortune, their predicament, their tragedies, or do you empathize with them knowing that you are also human? My, my, my mind goes to a scripture in the Bible. It's in the book of Galatians in the New Testament. That's maybe the seventh or the eighth book in the New Testament. It goes like this. Let he that thinks he stands take heed lest he falls. Just when you are laughing at somebody else, you might be standing on quicksand. You know, and so it's more the disposition, and that's what Jonah had to handle, and that's what we all have to handle, because in some way, form, or shape, we all carry messages, whether it's uh, the government message, whether it's the policy of the company, whether it's a message from the bank, whether it's the loan debt collection message, whether it's the creditor's message, whether it's the doctor's message, whether it's those of us who preach God's message, we all carry a message. West African Exams Council, they carry a message. The examining board, the your medical report, you know, the appeal court, everybody carries some kind of a message. And for the ordering of society, uh, we do it with a lot of dignity and patience. So God's word came to Jonah, as you know, and um, the word said, Arise, go to the city Nineveh, that great city whose wickedness has arisen before me. Cry against them. And it says Jonah did arise. He actually arose. But he went in the totally opposite direction. History and geography show that from where he was, where he lived, to Nineveh was 500 miles. But from where he lived to where he went, Tashish, was 2,500 miles in the opposite direction. And his mind was, I'm going to run as far away from God as I can. So he will forget about me. He wouldn't think about me. The assignment he gave me, he will forget about it and give somebody else. My dear friends, you are who you are, one, because God made you who you are. And in doing so, he put your personality, your giftings, your skills, your motivation, your penchant, everything together as the gift mix that makes you who you are. And the joyful part of it is that what makes that is what makes you unique and not a copy of anybody. Yes, you may look like your dad, you may have the mannerisms of your mom, you may be an identical twin, but you are unique and unique in your own way. And so when God feels that a certain message has to be delivered, he looks around and he picks you to do it. And all he expects from you is faithfulness, is righteousness, is to do what God asked you to do. God does not expect any extra work from a mailman. He's given the mail and he said, take it to house two, plot four, apartment six, street nine, and he does it. He doesn't know who lives there. He doesn't know whether they're on vacation. He doesn't know whether they had a quarrel the night before. His business is to drop it. 
and go back.